Hi, I am Adolf Navarro, and this time I want to show you how one single person can create very cool action sequences in a short period of time just using icons and the characters and models of Revolution Content Store. Please take a look at this. I made these sequences and more just by myself in a couple of weeks, including the video and audio editing. You can take a look to the complete demo video in the link below. But let's see how I did it, and the most important, how you can do it. First of all, we have to build the sets. Using Revolution 3D Exchange, we can import any FBX, OBG, 3DS, or Sketch App file and convert them in icons native format. But Revolution also has its own content store with tons of high quality models and characters featuring low polygon meshes and PBR textures specially designed for real time animations. And mostly, that's what I have used in this video. For the Gladiators Combat, I use the Fantasy Pack Rome props to build a simulation of an ancient Roman village street and I completed the scene with one of the standard skies included in Icon. I created the characters in Revolution's character creator, and to speed up the process, I used the Realistic Human 100 pack to load different faces and skin tones to my character with one single click. In any case, any character can be easily modified using CC sliders. allowing us to generate an infinite number of human characters. I dress up some of my characters using the Gladiator Packs 1 and 2. One fantastic feature of Character Creator is that the clothes applied to the characters are automatically conformed to the shape of the character. And if you modify the shape after the cloth has been applied, again, it is conformed automatically to the new shape. In the same way, I use the Imperator and the Roman soldier packs to dress the Roman army soldiers. I imagine a kind of a Spartacus sequence where some gladiators rebelled against the Roman soldiers, so I needed the combat motion clips to apply into the characters. I found the perfect solution in the sword and shield combat combo. These pre-recorded motion clips save me the task to have to record my own mocap motions. So no motion capture devices were needed for these combat scenes. I worked with the clips in the timeline in order to synchronize the combat movements. And then I use Icon's Edit Motion layer to edit the motions, adapting them to my current needs in each scene. After that, I use Icon's Face Key Editor to put the expressions in the warrior faces in a very quick and easy way. Working with crowds can be painful, especially when making the choreography for the combats. The more characters you put in the scene, the more heavy and hard to manage the project becomes. So, I use a trick commonly used in compositing that is working in layers. 
but instead to do it in the post-production phase, I used combat sequences with few characters rendered from icon in pop video format. Pop video is a resolution video format that works like a green screen. Then, these videos can be used as texture for billboards and placed in the back areas of the scene. They have a lot of advantages. We can move them and place them in the right position depending on the camera framing. They project real shadows and they are as well affected for the light conditions of the project. In this way we can break up the combat scenes in little projects, much easier to handle. So I ended using real 3D characters for the nearby actors, mix it with pop video billboards showing the distant actors, previously rendered in auxiliary projects. Using Revolution's pop video converter application, we can also convert any green, blue or black screen video in pop video format. So I added some fire sequences that I combine with FX popcorn particle effects. Rigid and soft cloth physics apply to some props like tables, food, barrels or hanged clothes. Put the icing on the cake. Icon's physics engine makes automatically all the calculations to get a natural movement in the interaction between the collision shapes assigned to the characters and the props. For the battle between the mechs and the human soldiers, I use the Mech Rex pack along with the freebie Mech Raptoid provided by Icon. On the human side, I use the Task Force combo that provide me all the characters, uniforms and guns that I needed in a single pack. And I also added the combat helicopter from the multipurpose helicopter pack. All the mech characters came with embedded performs that can be concatenated in the timeline. So it's very easy to create very cool animations with these models in a matter of minutes. The helicopter also comes with embedded scripts so it's also very easy to animate the rotors when the aircraft is flying. For the human motions, I used some clips included in the Adventure Movies motion pack. Once again, I didn't need any mocap device to do these sequences. As terrain, I just used tessellated planes previously deformed. For the backgrounds, I used light music billboards not affected by shadows texturized with real pictures because it allows me to get a very natural parallax effect when the camera is moving. But in this scene, I needed a complete 360 degrees background environment as the camera was following the helicopter while flying over the mechs. In order to get it, I used an app called Street View Download 360 to obtain the spherical map of some areas of the abandoned island of Hushima in Japan from Google Street View. I projected that image on a big sphere that had all the elements of the scene inside. It allowed me to have a continuous background image regardless the camera motions or rotations. In order to mask the limits of this simulated world, I added bushes and grass from Revolution's botanic pack. This pack supplies tons of trees, bushes and grass varieties in speed tree format. They can be animated by wind and they can be automatically planted following the terrain. To improve the integration, I use part of the texture contained in the 360 image to create the maps for the terrain so they both matched in appearance. I realized that the sphere containing the scene couldn't be as big as I wanted in order to keep the appropriate building proportions. It forced me to keep the path where the helicopter was moving inside of the sphere, so I had to trick the perspective, actually changing the size of the helicopter and its attached objects while it was moving through the path. I had to detach two of the rockets from the helicopter and link them instead because in certain point of the animation they must be released and follow their own way. 
I attach the spell trial FX popcorn particle effect to the back of the release rockets to simulate the thrust and the smoke trail. I also used all the cool popcorn particle effects like the blast to make the explosions, the mesh emitter and the collapsing sand to simulate debris expelled from the ground, the firearm to simulate the gun muscle flashes, the campfire to set things on fire and the fog effect to create a dusty environment. Finally, I used the same picture of the backgrounds for the project IBL or image based lighting. Although an HDR or high dynamic range image is recommended as a source for the IBL, we also can use a common RGB image as well. It generates global ambient light in the scene that perfectly matches with the background. It really makes a difference in the way our brain perceives the models, looking definitely more real and integrated with the environment. In the post-apocalyptic scenes, I used again one of the high map large terrains of Eichland, this time making it almost flat. Then, I created several scenes using the cool decaying buildings and props of the ghost town pack. And once again, I used the bushes, trees and grass of the botanic pack. I created the background using a single image of clouds and the sky repeated in three billboards. This time, I use opacity maps to make transparent the edges of the images, so I could mix them hiding the joints. The third billboard placed in front of the other two not only hides the joint, but also provides a cool parallax effect, adding volume to the background. The nice Mad Max style vehicles and their gears are from the Doomsday Vehicles combo. Using Eichland's bullet physics engine, these vehicles can be driven over the terrain in Eichland, using Lewis Creek controllers included with the models. So, while we drive the cars like in a video game, their motions are automatically recorded in real time. This is really useful because the spin of the wheels is automatically synchronized with the translation of the vehicles while following the unevenness of the terrain, avoiding us a lot of work. I use the Curve Editor plugin to smooth the bumping of the cars over the terrain that sometimes can be too jittery, especially if the vehicle is going fast. Then I use dummy objects for each wheel, assigning them spring physics properties. I related them to the another dummy object attached to the car chassis. After attaching the wheels to the spring dummy objects and playing the sequence with Icon's physics engine activated, I got a cool effect simulating the action of the shock absorbers in the vehicle wheels. Particle effects simulating dust linked to the wheels and chassis completed the picture. I found the perfect characters for these scenes in the Survivor's Pack. These characters, texturized using real human pictures, came with all sorts of post-apocalyptic clothes and accessories. They can be used in combination with FX popcorn particle effects to achieve very cool shots, like the flamethrower or the bullet impacts when using the machine gun installed in one of the cars. In this scene, I did a little extra work, exporting the water deposit model in FBX format and using a modeling app to break part of its space in several pieces. I re-imported the modified model into iClone using 3D Exchange leaving the broken parts of subprops or child objects of the main prop. I set rigid physics properties for each one of the parts, so I just had to drive the pickup into the tower using the Lua controller to get a convincing crash scene automatically generated by Icon's physics engine. One more time, I used the motion clips included in the Adventure Movies motion pack 
to animate the characters in combination with other icon tools, like the rich object feature that forces some character parts to follow the selected dummy objects attached to a parent one. So, when it's moved, the character moves as well, seeming that it is the character who controls the object when it is just the contrary. For the Assassin's Creed exterior scenes, I used again the fantasy background to build the set, but this time I texturized the background billboards with pictures that I took of the medieval cathedrals of Girona. For the interior shots, I found all the necessary in the nice medieval tavern pack. I used the cool characters, clothes and accessories included in the Assassin's pack. I animated them mostly using the fantastic motion clips of the Assassin Moves pack, also including some clip from the mentioned Adventure Movies motion pack. Once again, I set physics attributes to some objects in this scene, so they could interact with the collision shapes of the character when he moved. In this way, all the motions caused by the character hitting the table were automatically calculated by Icon's physics engine. And finally, in these scenes, I quite used the intuitive Icon timeline tools to mix different motion clips obtaining a very smooth and seamless transition between clips. Icon's real-time render engine allowed me to check the results in the fly. Working with Icon, what you see is what you get, and even in the most complex scenes with global illumination activated, render times are reduced dramatically. Not to have to wait for a long and slow render process is a great advantage. Any error can be immediately noticed, corrected and re-rendered in a matter of minutes. And it gives us a freedom and flexibility not known in the conventional animation pipelines. The final icon render can be improved in the editing phase using cinematic filters. I edited the clips in Vegas Pro 14 having installed HitFilm Ignite Pro filters. So I easily got a nice cinematic aspect, just dragging and dropping the desired filters on the clips and working with their settings. And this is it. I hope it can help you in your projects. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video.